<laughs> Unbelievable. You hear that and you think, this better be good. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about dealing with disappointment. Uh, no, I... I uh, <laughs> Hey, this is so awesome to see everybody here. I love it. Okay, if you're over the age of 20, let me hear it. Let me hear you. Give me some. If you are 20 or younger, give me some power. Let me hear it. Unbelievable. That is fantastic. Just, just love that we're all gathered here, this family, and here and over in Center Court East. Uh, thank you so much for being, being here today. You know, when, when I was a little uh, boy, this might surprise you a little bit, when I was a little kid, um, <clears throat> one of my hobbies was, was bugs, insects. Do you like insects? Yeah, okay, because there's one right near your foot. Just kidding. No, but, uh, no, but I used to, I really loved, I loved bugs. And, um, <clears throat> and actually, my favorite bug, and this is not technically an insect, and some of you will know this if you're into um, entomology, but uh, my, my favorite insect, my favorite bug was a caterpillar. And I like caterpillars because, well, first of all, because they're, they're, kind, of, they're kind of fuzzy and hairy, and, 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 and there's, there's not been a, just a ton of fuzz in here in my life. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's not funny, ma'am. But, uh, but, but the other thing about caterpillars is you can do stuff with them, you know? Like, it, it's really hard to spend a day with a cockroach, but, but, uh, but, but um, uh, maybe a half a day, sure. But, but uh, caterpillar, the thing about it is, like, you could do, like, I would take a caterpillar and, and uh, well, just, like, I'd start off, I'd go down to our bus stop, and just to kind of give you a little background, there was a girl at our bus stop, her name was Shelly, and I didn't, I didn't like Shelly because, because she would beat me up. And, and this was, this was tough, this tough, because I was, I was 17 years old. And uh, no, actually, she was a big kid. I mean, she was like ninth grade or something. And I was, I was like, I don't know, I was like, I, was like, I don't know, six. And, and she was just like a bully. And, and so uh, I would take my caterpillar down there, you know, and just take it out of my pocket and, um, and, and kind of unfold him a little bit and, and lay it across my uh, mouth like that across my lip, you know, so it would look like uh, I had a mustache, and, and then I'd go over to her and say, uh, uh, hi, Shelly, guess who reached puberty this week, and, uh, and, 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 and <clears throat> she'd beat me up, but, but um, or, or um, you know, you could take it, and um, you could also take them and just lay them, uh, get a good bushy one, lay it across your eyebrow like that. So it just looks like a big bushy eyebrow. And then you go up to one of your buddies and say, how you doing? And give him a wink and it looks like your eyebrow fell off. And then that's kind of fun. But the cool thing is, and I, maybe, and I'm, I don't know, maybe I was an unusual child, but uh, you're going, you were. But uh, I, I liked, uh, I liked, I, I could take a caterpillar and like I would name it in the morning and just spend the day with it. And, and so, you know, I'd go, okay, you know, <clears throat> Petey. Petey, how you doing, Petey? And um, and then I could just do stuff. I said, Petey, you don't want to fly, <laughs> you know. And uh, you know, Petey, want to play basketball, <laughs> you know. And uh, you know, uh, Petey, want to swim, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, Petey, want to go piggyback? <laughs> mm, yeah. And and um, that's a little sad. And anyway, you don't have to believe this, but one day, one day. Um, I was coming home from the bus stop, and as I was walking home, there were two caterpillars in front of me, and they were just walking along, talking, crawling along, and talking, and uh, and and uh, and and they were talking about something called a cocoon, and that which just they had no idea. It just sounded awesome, awful, and. And, and frightening and dark, and, and, and one of them said, I'm allergic to silk, and, and, uh, and, and so they, they didn't like it, and I, and, and I didn't want to interfere, I just listened, uh, but finally, uh, honestly, you know how it goes, after a couple of minutes, I just felt like I needed, to, I just wanted to say something, so I, I just reached down, and I picked him up, uh, just like between my fingers, like just picked him up and just looked at him right into their antennae. And, uh, and, and, uh, and you could just see just in their faces, just raw terror. You know, one of them's going, that's the kid that killed Petey. And, uh, and, and, and I remember, uh, you know, just, just looking into his, their faces and going, you know what? You know what? Um, being a caterpillar is not that awesome. 
Like you might think this is great, crawling around in the dirt and everything, but it's not. And I love to gesture like that with them. It lets them know I mean business. And uh, the heads are going like, and, and I said, you know what? That's not what it's, that's not what it's about. You, weren't, you were never created to be a caterpillar. You, you, you weren't. You, you were actually created to be this, this amazing, beautiful thing that soars and floats and it's free and it, it feasts in the treetops. You were meant to be a butterfly. And they don't believe me. They don't believe me. They just look at me like you're nuts. Like you're, you're pulling our leg, pulling our leg, pulling our leg, pulling our leg, pulling our leg. And they just, they just don't buy it. And, and you just go, well, what? Yeah, how in the world do you explain to a caterpillar the possibility of butterfly? How do you do that? How, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do you say, look, you, you weren't meant to be living in the dirt. You weren't meant to have everybody looking down on you and you look up on them and people stepping on you all the time. That, that you were created to be free and beautiful and, and, floor, and just soaring with the, with, the, with the breezes and you're meant to be a completely new creature. How do you explain that to somebody who only knows Caterpillar? who only knows caterpillar. That's precisely the question I want us to think about this morning. I want us to think about what does it mean, what could it mean for those of us in this room, this Super Bowl Sunday, what if you and I had the possibility of a completely new life? What what, what if, in fact, we had actually settled for a life that was so far less than that for which we were created? What if we were settling for caterpillar when we were created to be totally new creatures, butterflies. Um, I'm going to invite you to read me a passage of scripture this morning in 2 Corinthians 5.17. And we're going to put it up on the screen here so we can all read it together today. Um, and so let's just, let's just read it together out loud. 2 Corinthians, this is in the New Testament, uh, chapter 5, verse 17. Let, let's read together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Okay, I tell you what, that's good. I want to read it again. All right, and this time we read through, we're going to do uh, we're going to do a choral reading today. And so and so this time we read it through. Uh, we're going to do it in three different groups. Okay, you guys over here, I want you to do the first line. It'll be in red. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you folks right here in the middle, uh, you will do. He is a new creation. He is a new creation. And you'll see that in blue. And then you folks over here on this side. Uh, you're going to do the black. It's called the old has passed away. That's where, that's where a lot of the old people sit. And, 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 and so, and so we'll, we'll, we'll sort of do it like that. And then we will all together, together, all of us are going to say, behold, the new has come. And I want to hear that with some volume, okay? I want that to be loud. I want that to be loud enough that, 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 that people who are driving by out there I go, holy cow, uh, you know, they start to swerve. And so, and, and, and so let, let's, let's do it together uh, in segments. We'll start off with you guys. Go. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, wow. Some of this is rhetorical, so you don't have to actually respond. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, isn't that, isn't that amazing? Uh, I, I mean, this, this, this passage of Scripture, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old has passed away. Everything is fresh and new. You know, one of the things that, that you have to kind of get used to when you come to church, and some of you know what I'm talking about, some of you might even be new here today, and you, you kind of know what I'm going to say. Is there's, this, there's, this, there's this lingo, you know, that we use at church that you don't use everywhere. Like, in, like at my high school, you could go weeks without using the word propitiation. And, uh, and, and, and so, you know, you, you just, you don't use this stuff. You don't hear it very often. Like I remember saying, I'm telling you guys sometime not too long ago about, like when I was a little kid, we did the Lord's Prayer. And I hear all these big words, you know. And I didn't know what they were, so I just kind of like, you know, our Father who art in New Haven, uh, you know, how do you know my name? Uh, you know, um, uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us some email. 
You know, and, and like you just don't know. These are words you don't, you just hear these. Or, or like I remember when I was a kid, the pastor would say, to me, we, we need to be consecrated. And I'm going, why do we want to be constipated? <laughs> then, then I looked around the sanctuary and go, no, these people do look constipated. And, 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 and there's this lingo. And, 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 and sometimes if we're not careful, because these words seem strange to us, or because they seem new to us, or because they seem weird to us, we just kind of drive by them and we miss something stunning. And I want us this morning to think for a few minutes about one of these words because it's right at the heart of what Paul's talking about in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It's the word regeneration. Regeneration. It's an amazing word. It's an awesome word. It literally, it means that you were generated and then you're Regenerate. It's not, not, not just a makeover. It's a, it's a do-over. Uh, Jesus, you remember this? He even described it as being like you were born once and then you're born again. It re- regeneration. Not, not just turning over a new leaf, but turning over a new life. This idea of regeneration, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature The past is finished and gone. Everything is fresh and new. That is a stunning idea. What this morning, what if you and I could actually embrace that truth in our lives? What if we could kind of turn away from caterpillar crawling and experience the wonder, the new life of butterfly freedom? There are two phrases I just want us to talk about briefly this morning. Both of them are in this passage, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The first one is that phrase, if anyone is in Christ. If anyone is in Christ. I, I love that word, anyone. Because I'll be honest with you, when, when, I, was, when I was growing up, and, and certainly when I was in middle school and high school, like I, I, just, I, I just, whenever I heard people talk about God, uh, I, I thought, well, that's nice. That sounds like a nice thing. And, uh, but, but I just thought, there's no way God would be interested in a guy like me. Like that, that word, anyone, would pretty much refer to anyone but me. And, and, and I don't know why I did or what, what, what came with that. I think part of it was I just thought, I get it. God loves religious people. God likes people who who you know who who use the Christian yellow pages and and uh, you know and they they maybe um, you know maybe they have uh, like a, a little keychain in the shape of Noah's Ark and and uh, you know they they, uh, they oh, and and they don't leave tips. They leave little fake dollar bills that have tracks in them. Waiters love those and and uh, and or or, 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 or it, it's even better. You know who God loves? God loves people who put bumper stickers on the back of their car with an ichthus just devouring a dinosaur. I mean, God loves that kind of stuff. And, 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 and I, I thought I'll, I could never, ever be one of the anyone. But what I want us to understand this morning, men and women, and I don't know what your story is. I don't know if you're just visiting today and maybe you're joining us online or maybe you're over in, in Center Course East or maybe you're right here and you're, you're kind of going, well, well, I mean, I just kind of came to, 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 frankly, because I heard you guys had popcorn uh, and, 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 uh, and it was good. And I, I plan to get a bunch more for our party this afternoon. But, but, but uh, you know, this is kind of a new thing for you. You might think, it would be easy to think that somehow God favors just the religious... What's stunning about this word, anyone, is it reminds us that God's grace, God's arms are open wide to all of us here today. You don't have to come fixed. You don't have to come prepared. You you don't have to come already like a butterfly. God allows us to come to him as we are, anyone in Christ. We have the potential to knowing regeneration, new life. That's the first phrase. Anyone in Christ, anyone in this room, in Christ, new creature. But that's, that's where the second phrase comes in because I just think it's stunning. Any person in Christ can become a new creation. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Um, I, 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 I think I mentioned this a few years ago here at Faith Bridge that one of my hobbies is what's called found art. And I don't know uh, how much you know about found art, but found art is basically a genre of art where artists literally find just stuff 
on the street. Sometimes they'll, they'll, find, they'll literally do dumpster diving. Uh, sometimes they'll find shells on the beach. Uh, some people do buttons. Uh, one guy uses, uh, uses the, the tape in cassettes. Those of you under 20, raise your hand. If you don't know what a cassette is, ask somebody older than you. It's basically a thing that you use a pencil on. But, uh, but, but essentially, you know, it's, it's, uh, they would take the cassettes and they kind of make designs with that. I mean, there's one guy that even made a, a Christmas wreath out of uh, used cigarette butts. Well, now, you know what? You're laughing, but a lot of people commented on our front door this year. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, and no, nothing says festive like a smoked cigarette. Uh, but but uh, these guys just are, are gifted. They take stuff. And, and one of my favorite found artists is a couple, a British couple, uh, Tim Noble and Sue Webster. And what they do is they literally just take, from what I can tell, pretty much any kind of trash. They, they, they're not selective. They don't have like you know, a certain genre, uh, like scrap iron. They just use any kind of garbage they could find. In fact, uh, I'll show you one of their works. Well, look at the screen here. This is, this is a work by them. And, and um, I, I know when you look at it like this, you go, I think I can do that. But in fact, I think we have done that in our backyard. But, but actually, um, it, what's, what's stunning is they pile this junk in such a way that when they shine light on it, all of a sudden, the shadow, let's go to the next slide, you see something you never expected to see. So they, they take this, this trash, they expose it to light, and all of a sudden, you just step back and go, I would never in a million years have believed that could come from that. And you know why I find found art so intriguing, men and women? Because that's the gospel. You see, what the scripture tells us is that we give Jesus our junk. We give him our resentments and our hurts and our, and our bad marriages and our bad relationships with our mom or dad and hassles at school and the guilt and the words. If we give God our trash, he exposes it to the light of his grace and his love and by his Holy Spirit, all of a sudden we begin to see something that none of us would have expected to see. It would be like, trying to tell a caterpillar that he might become a butterfly. It is astonishing grace. And that's regeneration. That's regeneration. That's what God invites us into this morning. Now, I know some of you are here today, as I said, visiting, which is fantastic. We're delighted you're here. But maybe you're going, well, that, that, I don't think that could really, I mean, that's, that's great. That sounds really heartwarming. Oh, my gosh, I wish I had a yearbook so you could sign it. Uh, you know, that just sounds fantastic. But I don't know if that could really work in my life. And I totally get that. I totally understand that. I'll be honest with you. I stand in front of, of people just like yourselves almost every week somewhere. And I often wonder the same thing. I, I speak to teenagers a lot, and I, I can see it in their faces when I'm speaking. They're just going, no, you know what, that, that's probably not going to work for me. And there are times when I look into their eyes and I go, I think they might, I wonder if they're not right. Like it just, you know, I, I, see, the, I see sometimes the doubt and the, and the sense of I'm too far gone. And, and, I, and, 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 and but whenever I start to think that way, you know what God does? When I say, God, could you really, can you really take a room full of caterpillars and somehow make us into these new creatures? Can that really be? God takes me back. And he reminds me over the years, all these years in youth ministry and, and, and just doing ministry, and he gives me names and faces and stories just like Pastor Kim was talking about and where I hear these stories. And, and it's almost like he gives me a slideshow on the, on the wall of my right here on the screen. You know, he actually just reminds me of what he's done and, and, and the caterpillars and, and how these people have been morphed into new creatures. And in fact, one of my favorite stories, whenever I start to wonder, God, can you really pull it off? Every youth worker, every youth worker has a kid like this, a story like this, where you just thought there's no way. If God does love this kid, God doesn't know him as well as we do. And, 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 uh, and I, 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 you know, I remember we had a kid like this and a group I was part of where, you know, I was, we, he was, he was kind of, he, he wasn't a bad kid, but he was kind of church impaired. Uh, 
Uh, you know, he, he, just, he just was not gifted. He was the kind of kid, like literally, we'd be doing Bible study, and you'd say, uh, turn in your Bibles, please. And he'd start passing his up. And you go, no, no, not turn it in. I mean, open it. I mean, he just, he just wasn't good at, at church stuff. And, and, uh, and, and so, like, like to give you an example, uh, one night we're having this really intense sharing time, kind of a youth group thing. We're all in a hotel room on a weekend deal. And, and it's just, if you've ever been in youth ministry more than about 20 minutes, you've been in this room where it's like three layers of adolescence just crammed in there. Uh, people on the beds and between the beds and over on the sink and under the sink and next to the TV and one guy's on the toilet and and uh, and, and, there's, and and they're kind of talking and and anyway this girl was on the end of the bed across from the television and she was kind of sharing and and it was quite poignant the story she was telling is she was talking about some decisions that she made about which she just felt deep regret and hurt and and remorse and 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 around the room you could hear other kids in our youth group kind of go. <laughs> You know, because they sympathize with her pain. Well, as she's talking, this kid happens to be sitting right next to her on the end of the bed. The thing is, the longer she talked, the later it got and the sleepier he became. And, and so when everybody else is just sympathizing with him, you couldn't help, you know, as, as she's talking and we're all kind of feeling with her, you, this guy, you could just see if he's fighting sleep. His eyelids are just like... <laughs> You know, you know, just just not unlike what's happening right in this room, and and uh, I mean, just fighting sleep, and and anyway, finally she gets to a place where she's so overwhelmed with her just her grief, she just starts sobbing, and and she puts her head in her hands, just starts sobbing like that, and 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 and. and, and we don't know exactly what happened at that point. We don't know if it was the rocking of the bed. Uh, or, or it just came to a tipping point. But all we know is that everybody in our youth group watched this kid next to her as he slowly keeled over and essentially wound up asleep in her lap. And, and people in our youth group were looking at him going, he does not have a soul. You know, but he wasn't like he wasn't trying to be rude, right? I mean, you know, I I, I understand that he was just he was just he was just sleeping. That was the kind of kid he. Was. Or 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 uh, here, here's another example. We're we're on a we're on a choir tour, and uh, he's in the back of the bus kissing his girlfriend. And of course, if you're the youth pastor, you go you know you go back there and say, hey, knock knock, knock it off, you know. Cut. And um, and you you know you kind of and they go right you know and and so I trusted you I trusted you guys and you abused that trust I do not want you to be together again for the rest of this trip do you hear me and and, and they go yeah 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 and and well anyway that night we were doing a concert in Atlanta and and um, the way you do these choir tours a lot of times is you stay in the homes of the people in the congregation for whom you perform and so that night after the concert despite explicit instructions. He arranges it with his host. She arranges it with her host. And they sneak out and they meet in this kind of nightclub area underneath the city of Atlanta. Called, it's called Underground Atlanta. And they're down there till like one o'clock in the morning. And it's not that they're doing anything just, just heinous and evil. It's just, you know, they're, they're, they're just breaking every rule in our youth group and, and church and denomination. And, 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 and you, know, you, just, just, you just want to pull your hair out. And, and, uh, and, and so it was just that kind of thing. In fact, in fact one of the weirdest ones was uh, we, we were at this, we were at this uh, conference center down in North Carolina. And in the middle of the night, one of the counselors hears a noise, doesn't know what it is, gets out of his bed. I mean, it's like 2.30 in the morning, walks across the floor. It's an old building with one of these kind of stairway ladder things that fire escape things that goes down the side of the building and and you you step out of the window to get on the landing and as soon as he gets on the landing he knows what the noise is coming from it's a rope grating against the railing of the landing and he looks up and sure enough it's this kid in the middle of the night hoisting a pull in the rope like this is his job and and the the the, the, the counselor looks down the kid is stealing a toilet. I mean, he's hoisting a toilet. And I don't mean, I don't mean just a urinal. I'm talking the whole honking tank and bowl. This thing must have weighed a ton. In fact, the counselor made a tactical error because he goes, hey, and the kid just goes, 
You know, and I mean, I still have nightmares thinking if he'd had an accomplice down there. Uh, can you imagine trying to explain to somebody's mother, you know, yes, ma'am, that, that is an unusual bruise. Uh, you know, I don't know why it would look like a handle. Uh, in fact, one of the, 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 here's the straw that broke the camel's back. We were down in Haiti on a mission trip at this place called Bolos, and we were in a uh, kind of a school there, and it was a very rustic missionary compound, and the walls between each room didn't go all the way up to the ceiling. There was about an eight-inch gap between the top of the wall and the ceiling. So this guy, in the middle of the night, is entertaining his buddies by standing on his bunk and spitting over the wall on the guests in the room next door, which they did not care for. And, uh, and, and I mean, just one thing after another where you're just going, there's, you know, this kid, he's going to become a caterpillar to a dead caterpillar. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, somebody just needs to smush him. And, you know, and, 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 but here's the wonder of regeneration. Here's the wonder of the power of God. That kid, that kid actually met Jesus. Not, not, not in high school, didn't have, but in his first year of college, that kid became a Christian. And, 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 and God began to work on him. God began to take that caterpillar and begin to mold him into a new creature, a butterfly. That they, that, and, and, and it didn't happen fast, but God began to work in that kid's life. It was so fun to be there to watch it. And, and, then, and then when he graduated from college, get this, remember the girl on the bus? He married her. He married her. And then he went to seminary and studied for the ministry. And when he graduated from seminary, he went into full-time youth ministry. This is the justice of God. He went into full-time youth ministry. But listen to this. To this day, that kid is still involved in ministry with teenagers. And I know this kid's story is true because you know the woman on the bus? I actually talked with her this morning when I called home. And that kid on the bus, that was me. That was me. I know. I know it seems nuts. I know it seems crazy. But this is a God, men and women, who redeems, who regenerates, who makes us new. If anyone, anyone is in Christ, new creature. The past is finished and gone. Everything is fresh, is fresh and new. I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. But before we close in prayer, I want to say two things. The first one is this. Um, you, you, you might, some of you here this morning might be going, you know what? Um, this is weird. Uh, but I, I think he's talking to me. Like, I, I, I feel it in my gut. There's, I, I, have, I don't know what to name it. I don't know the right lingo for it. But I know I'm tired of caterpillar crawling. And I want to know butterfly freedom. And I want you to know that you were created for more than what you have. You were created for life abundant. But the reason you and I fall short of that life to which we were called is because though we were made in the image of God, that image has been marred and messed up by sin. We do our own thing. We make our own choices. We try to fly and we just crash and burn because only God can make us into butterflies. But here's the great news. Jesus came and died on the cross. And when he died on the cross, he paid the debt of death that we owe for our sin. So by washing that sin away, we can actually be made new again in him. We rise with him from the dead and his Holy Spirit lives in us so that we can be regenerated, born again. We can know butterfly freedom. That can be your story. And I get it. You probably weren't expecting that. He, all you know is you walked into a building through the mouth of a tiger. <laughs> and now, holy cow, it feels like you're walking into the arms of a loving God. That's precisely why you are here today. If you want to talk to somebody, please, after the service, we're going to have some folks up here. We'd love to pray with you. We love, don't, don't let this moment pass. Let's do this today. Let us talk with you about it so we can pray with you and help you to take those next steps. 
The other comment I want to make is simply this. We've still got the drawing for the raffle. That's going to be awesome. So, so uh, we're going to close in prayer, but then we're going to have the big, uh, the big drawing and, and, and finish out our Super Bowl Sunday together. So let me, let me pray for us. Lord, thank you again for these people. Thank you for this family at Faith Bridge. Uh, we are so grateful, Lord, that we could all come together today and be reminded again of your profound, gracious, wondrous love for us that you can take our junk shine on at the light of your grace and that all of a sudden you astonish us with color and, and, and beauty and shape that we never, ever expected to see. You bring marriages to life. You help families become healed. You can take resentments and make them new. Lord, you are a regenerating God, a redeeming God. And I pray that you would do that work in us even right now. We ask this in the name of Jesus, and everybody said, amen.